Okay, so uh, when talking about the differences between continuity and differentiability, so let's uh, take this type of function that we have right here, which consists of a line, a quadratic, and a line. Okay? So, uh, well, if we're actually going to define this thing, we need to uh, figure out what the equation of these lines are. And then we can actually graph the derivative and see that the derivative from different directions doesn't agree with each other. And so, <clears throat> let's say we we're going to figure out what f1 is. Okay, now m, which is going to be the slope of this, which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So, we'll call this one y2, why not? So that would be four minus zero divided by negative two minus, now negative four. Okay. So that would be four divided by, that's negative two plus four. So that would be two, so it would be two on those. Okay? So, <clears throat> if we use the point slope formula, y minus y1 is going to equal m times x minus x1, okay? Well, we have y minus, all right, let's, uh, let's, for consistency, we'll stick to y1 and the x1. So that's y minus zero is going to equal two times x, and then minus negative four. Okay? So, <clears throat> y, all right, so x minus negative four is x plus four. y is going to equal two x plus eight. All right. So I would say, if we want to label this in this way, we're going to say f1 of x equals two x plus eight. I'm just gonna tell you what the next one is. F2 of x is going to equal x squared. All right, now we have to figure out what F3 of x is. Right. So I'm just gonna put this right no, wait just a second, so everybody get caught up. Alright. Alright, so now we have to consider F3. Now for F3, once again, m is going to equal y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And we'll call, you know, this is easier if we put this one as y1 and x1. Um, so we'll call this y2 and x2. So y2 would be four minus zero and then x2 would be two and then minus four, which would equal four divided by negative two, which would equal slope of negative two, okay? All right, and then we use our point slope formula of y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And the reason I'm labeling that y1 and x1 is that that's a zero right there. This makes the problem easier. So, y minus zero is going to equal m times, oh, I didn't mean to write that Y minus zero is going to equal negative two and then multiplied by x minus four. And I'm picking those just because it makes it easier. So if I multiply the negative two inside here, I'm going to get negative two x and then negative two times a negative four is a positive eight. So y is going to equal negative two x 
plus eight. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna say f three of x equals negative two x plus eight. All right, now the lengthening of this is a little bit arbitrary when I actually design this function. Um, but let's look at um, how, if I was gonna write this into a computer and tell a computer to graph it, um, how would I actually, and this is what I normally do when I um, write Charles tests. Uh, I'll uh, program the computer to figure out um, how to graph this object. And so if I was asking the computer to do this, telling the computer to do it, All right, now, f of x would equal All right, now we're gonna start off with f1, okay? So that would be 2x plus eight, all right? And then we have to look at our interval and say negative four, less than x, which is less than negative two. x squared, if negative two is less than or equal to x, which is gonna be less than or equal to positive two. And then negative two x plus eight, if let's say two is less than x, which is less than or equal to four. Um, now I'll give everybody a, a chance to write that down. Uh, normally, if you program this though, <clears throat> uh, well, if you're using tech and you're gonna draw something like this, you actually don't include the less than or equals. Uh, if you wanna draw a, a, a solid dot, you would actually include a point, I think it's called C dot, um, and just define it at that point. Okay, so now think about um, the difference between continuity and differentiability, okay? Now, if I'm uh, just considering, right, so instead of just looking at this graph and saying, okay, now if I approach from the left or I approach from the right, it's going to equal the same point. Let's do a formal definition of how we would define a function to be continuous at a point. Okay. So, instead of looking at the graph, let's just look at what we have right here, okay? So if you weren't given any type of graph, and you're just given this function, which is a piecewise function, that you are trying to examine, okay? And now if we're talking about the continuity of this function, no graph, just the function, um, defined this way, how would we prove that a function is continuous at a point? Uh -huh. Well, <clears throat> you'd say, well, let's start with the point negative two. The limit as x tends towards negative two from the left of f of x will equal the limit as x tends towards negative two of 2x plus 8, okay? Because the function is defined as 2x plus 8 uh, from the left. Well, all right, now we need to mark that left. Now this function is continuous from the left or the right, but it's only defined on the left. So uh, what would happen is I would plug in negative 2. Three times negative two is negative four, negative four plus eight equals a positive four. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the limit as x approaches negative two from the right of f of x would equal the limit as x approaches negative two from the right of x squared. Okay, so this would become negative two squared 
which equals 4. Okay? So the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x equals 4, and that equals f of negative 2. And so why would it equal f of negative 2? <clears throat> it's because when we define this function, I said that it's going to equal x squared if negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. Uh, so uh, if I talk about the actual function value at that point, I'm going to plug negative 2 into that function. Okay. So <clears throat> if I'm approaching from the left or I'm approaching from the right, they go to the same point and it equals the function value at that point. And uh, at this point of the problem, I can say, So this is a statement of the proof of continuity, is that if I'm approaching from the left and I'm approaching from the right, um, do they go to the same point? It's like, well, yeah, it's a piecewise function. All you do is plug in those other two functions into this. And yes, they indeed, they do go to the same point. Okay? All right. So uh, that's a way to prove uh, formally that uh, a function is continuous at a point, okay? Now let's ask the question, is it differentiable at that point, okay? Now, if we consider the graph of this thing as its derivative, okay? So, and let me put this back. And the graphical representation, that's a formal definition of continuity through the limits. But if you think about it as a, a graphical representation, as I'm walking closer and closer to this point, I'm getting towards 4. Okay? If I'm walking from the left, I get towards 4. If I walk from the right, I get towards 4. And it's a filled-in dot at 4. So, yeah, my function is continuous at that point. So, for this first test, you're supposed to use the definition of the derivative. Uh, I'm going to kind of skip over that just a little bit on this one. Uh, and let's say, what if I wanted to write out what the derivative of this thing would actually appear as, right? So, <clears throat> f prime of x would equal... Now 2, if negative 4 is less than x, which is less than negative 2, 2x, two if negative 2 is less than x, which is less than 2, and negative 2, if 2 would be less than x, which would be less than 4. <clears throat> and you can go through the formal definition of the derivative to calculate those. So what would this thing actually look like if I tried to graph it? Okay. So <clears throat> if I was going to graph this thing. Okay, so we have the function defined as a piecewise function, as a piecewise continuous function. Its derivative itself is a piecewise function. Uh, the derivative is not a piecewise continuous function. Okay, so if I looked at the uh, the graph of this, okay, it's not the graph of f prime of x. Bit. 
So between negative four and negative two, we'll go here one, two. Okay. Now if I consider two x, if I plug in negative two into this, I'm gonna get negative four, so something's gonna be done here. I know this is not exactly the scale, but I hope you'll get an idea of this. And then from two to four. Would be like that. And so, actually, I want to put this like this. Now this is the difference between f of x and f prime of x. Okay. So <clears throat> another way, if you want to think about this as, as um, what is the definition of, um, I mean, like what are the conditions for differentiability? It means that the derivative has to be continuous, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> you can see on um, the, the normal function we're just talking about continuity, if you're trying to get to that point right there, if you approach from either direction, yeah, your derivatives, I mean, the, the function at that point is gonna be four. But if I think about, if I'm close to this point right here, if I'm taking the limit as I tend towards this point, the slope is negative four. So, if I'm going from this direction right here, that slope, on x squared, as I approach that point, the slope is negative four. If I'm going from this direction right here, and I'm approaching this point right here, the slope is positive too. So this has a positive slope, and then bam, at that point it, it switches to a negative slope. So it's going from positive to negative. So that's a, a big form of discontinuity with the derivative. So that's why this function is not differentiable at that point. And the same thing for that point over there is that you have this giant jump here in the derivative and the changing of the slopes. So that's why it's not differentiable at that point, okay? So um, you can actually, if you compare the graphs of f of x and f prime of x, then um, if you look at f prime of x and you're looking for the discontinuities of f prime of x, okay?